second recording of the day, a rarity for us, but today necessitated it because today we have uh, one of the true greats of the tech sports world here, uh, and it's a guy yeah, that I've been hoping right. to have on the podcast for a, a long time because our our in, our interests overlap a lot in terms of the things that we cover and talk about at tech, specifically the volleyball team. Um, and no one was more qualified in my mind to talk about the volleyball team that specifically doesn't play for the volleyball team uh, than Kurt Hoyt, who's been broadcasting radio uh, for Tech Volleyball since 2002 and Tech Women's Sports since 96. So, Kurt, thank you so much for coming to talk with me. Oh, thanks for having me. Been looking forward to sitting down with you for a while. We talk a fair amount after the games Those because mm-hmm. it's just I, I need to learn what's going on. You can tell me what's going on. It's good to have someone that can banter about this stuff with. So I'm glad we get to do this more extensively than just post game as well. Um, let's talk about the Nebraska game to start. Uh, what obviously a little lopsided because Nebraska is Nebraska, but uh, what did you see out of that game? Yeah, uh, you you saw that Nebraska is Nebraska, right? They yeah. they weren't going to allow Tech to come in and do what they did, you know, 20 years ago when Tech ended Nebraska's 52 match home winning streak. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, and so, you know, this Nebraska team's for real. Uh, they played in front of what, 90,000 plus in their football stadium earlier yep. this year. Uh, you know, they've got that entire state behind them and and they play a diff- they play a faster brand of volleyball than they did 20 years ago. Of course, a lot of teams do now. Yeah. But the speed that Tech played at 20 years ago was kind of new to the Nebraska folks. And mm. and uh, and that was as the game was kind of changing as you got rally. The rally scoring era was in full swing um, and uh, how the game played was was changing. And mm-hmm. and you started getting the growth of interest because, you know, it was a faster, more more exciting brand of volleyball. But yeah. That Nebraska team is right now is just I mean, look what they did last night. Right. Yeah. No, Pitt uh, they they, they, they know, made Pitt look they, Pitt what hit uh, nearly zero in that first set. And yeah, no one can do yeah. that. Ba- barely anyone gets gets to do that to Pitt. And they just had him for three. They had him I wouldn't say complete, complete control because Pitt made him made life a little bit difficult in that second set. But yeah, overall it's like that is arguably a national title game or a justifiable national title game, but it was still super one sided for that kind of game. Yes, yeah, so if even if you want to look at the tech match and go, oh wow, it was one sided. Well, look at the pit match. Yeah, right. It was it was it wasn't, I guess, as one sided. Right. But still, Nebraska, you know that no matter you know that that national title game is going to be something to watch. Yeah. And so it should it should get a, a good ratings. It deserves to get good ratings. Every, everything has been this year. So yeah, I imagine. Yeah, and and to have to play the number one seed in the tournament when you get to that round of sixteen, that's always that's that's hard. It's you tough. Know, yeah, Florida would not have done any better against Nebraska than than no. Tech did, and no. and even if you go look at the numbers in the game, you know we had almost we barely hit positive in that in that match. Yeah, and we had a high number of hitting errors that don't correlate with blocks by Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. So there's something folks I've been around in the volleyball world talk about a lot of which they call unforced errors. And those are, you know, essentially what it sounds like. It's not caused by the other team. So if you have a hitting error that isn't connected to a block credit to the other team, that's an unforced error. Mm -hmm. And we had a, a huge number of them, but it's not because our hitters are bad. It's because they're trying to find a little window, right? In yeah, that it, Nebraska defense, right? It, yeah, it felt like and, it felt like both Tamara and yeah. but Bianca just like they knew if they were gonna get these shots down, they had to hit the they had to hit lines perfectly. They had to find whatever little yep. spot they could to get around that. De- yep. It's like trying to get a hit a winner past Djokovic. Good luck. Yeah, it, like he's gonna get yeah. to the ball somehow, whether you like it or not. And so, right, that many errors was like okay. You had to go all or nothing. Like that was the only way you were gonna get through this team, probably, unless they had a bad night and. They don't have a bad night, right? And and there's there's still a sense that even reaching that match might be a little bit of overachieving by this team. I mean, I don't think Maybe. at the beginning of the year we, we had everybody thinking this is how that they would get this far, um, because you know we've we've lost Julia Bergman, mm-hmm. we lost 
both our middles from last year. Yeah, the entire middle blocking uh, core and main off offense is just gone. Yeah. Right. And so we were we were trying to and and we've had conversations, you know, with a lot of folks this year. I'm sure you've heard them and all this is like, are we a top 10 program at yeah. Georgia Tech in volleyball? And and to me, it's it's like we were at times this year, yes, we were a top 10 team. Mm. Uh, the top 10 program part, I think we're on the verge of mm -hmm. that because you're trying to reach that point in the program where as players move on, because they're going to move on, yep. you're reloading rather than rebuilding. Yep. Right. Because we see programs do this where they it gets built up to where about every four years, every three years, they get into the NCAA tournament and they go as f however far they go. Yep. Yeah. In some cases, you go a couple rounds. Some cases, you go pretty far. And then that next year, once that core that you've been building up for three or four years is gone, you're, you're having to start over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reloading bit is that you're a, an attractive enough program that those players are already there in the pipeline. And when they come in, they're ready to step in and they're going to keep you close to where you were. And that's where Louisville and Pitt are right now. Exactly. And we're right yeah. on that verge of it. Uh, and I'm hoping that recruits see what this coaching staff does in developing players. Yep. Because if you want to become a better player, Georgia Tech is one of the programs you want to come to to become a better player, particularly for middles. Yeah. I think we do a great job developing middles. We develop everyone pretty well, but over the past five, six years, we've really done a good job at developing middles. And mm -hmm. all you had to do is look at the two that graduated last year and where they started in this program yep. and where they finished. And you look at someone like Liv Mogridge with where she was and, and hampered by injury mm -hmm. and what she can become in this program over the next couple of years. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her floor was already good enough to be a, a, a threat for uh, at least a threat for other teams with how, we have yeah. so many weapons offensively and it's like, well, just give her three years of Claudio and, and Michelle, who knows where the heck she can go with that as well. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. I guess you're, you're treading into my next question of where, what did you make of this team as a whole this year? Um, I remember I, I was, I think I was a little bit more bullish on this team than you were from the outset. Cause I remember going to those first preseason matches and I was like, I don't know how good Mendez is. I don't know how good Manning is. I hadn't seen Pierce in person truly. So I was like, I know right. the weapons we have that are going to be good. Uh, the rest of it, who knows? And it looked all right to me. Like I was pleasantly surprised at how good Mendez was, her how good her floor was. She had a freshman season that was like most freshman seasons, some really good games, some, okay, clearly you're still a freshman kind of outings out there as well. Um, I had a slotted in. I don't know if you saw, I put this on Twitter in a couple other spots. The season finished exactly how I thought it was going to finish, which I had said we'll finish the Sweet 16 and lose to one of those teams that's probably going to make the Final Four. And the fact we got the exact same slot in the bracket as well as we did last year, with a very similar mm -hmm. ACC story as well of getting one good match in there, but losing some clunkers to Miami <laughs> again. Yeah, uh, it, it it felt deserved in the end, but yeah, I, mean, I guess. It, it, but it, they did the retooling and did it pretty well it could have been a lot worse than it was i mean they were beating ranked teams right. at the gate so it, it, and, and that's why i say we're right on that verge right yeah because we we did reload with some pretty good pieces that came in i mean you talk about pierce i mean she she barely played at texas yeah when she was there and so there were a lot of ways you know in which she's just starting out right and you could see her improvement as the season went on. Right. Yeah. And sure. she started to assert herself more, more and more and be, and the, you know, the, the window into which the ball had to be set for her to be successful got bigger yeah. as the year went on. That was a big, and, that was a big thing is like, and, there was so many balls she would scrape with her fingertips or just yeah. would just miss or just her and D'Amico or Suarez just exactly. didn't have that repertoire yet. Yeah, and she got those eleven kills against South Alabama in the first round. Yeah, and and so, you know, she's going to just get better because she'll again have another off season with this coaching staff. Yep, yep. She'll again have another opportunity next season. 
And she won't be like she was at the start of this past season, trying to get into the flow of the game, yeah, the yeah. flow of the matches and the speed of volleyball at this level. Because again, she hadn't played much in real matches yeah. while she was at Texas. So this is like her first real full-time right. experience. She's getting reps. Yeah. As a volleyball player. Yeah. 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 And so she's got the skills. She's got the ability. It's you gotta, you've got to play. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to, to be really good when you never play. Uh, and, and we even saw that with other players that got opportunities when Liv went down between yeah. Anna Bosey and, and, um, and, um, uh, well, mostly her My mind just went black. Man, yeah, mostly man, Percy, man, but... man yeah, got more, I guess, more time in there as well with, with just more available. Yeah. But spots. also you had, um, Sandin, you had, we, we had some Callie Sandin Engman. Points. Yeah. Callie had the, those couple of games. Yeah. Big, she, big, big know, performance and, in Virginia. Yeah. And, and, and you could see that's like, okay, there's a reason they're there at, at tech, but being able to get that game experience and Anna ended up getting a little more of it mm-hmm. as you know, during that whole injury period, but you could see her get comfortable right. and starting to, to say, okay, now we get to see what she can do. Cause you'd work like you say, and stay with Lauren Sandin, finally mm-hmm. get in, in the back row and, and uh, trying to get her serve working and, yeah. and these kinds of things to where you could see as the season went on, right. It's like, okay, now Lauren's going in. And it's a much better serve than it was the first time she yes, went in. It's yes, a, yes. you know, yeah. there's, she, she can be more aggressive. She can be more targeted with what she's doing because she's got the rhythm down. And so it's, yep. uh, it, you know, there's nothing like playing and, yep. and yep. these players are good. If you are, if you are on a division one roster, you're in the 1%. Yep. Of the high school players who played volleyball and club, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's that that's where you are. And so they're all good. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to to work their way onto the floor. And and and, uh, you know, their job is always to make the make the coaches jobs harder when they're trying to decide who yep. are we putting on the floor tonight. Yep. So yep. Uh, uh, it's they all do that and they all the they all were able to perform when called upon and you know we'll see more of that from some of them probably next season as well so yeah. talking about like getting called on what shocked me was that louisville game where we were without mogridge and pierce and Bozy have those games of their lives that they yeah. hadn't had the chance to and it turns out it was what arguably the best home win the program's ever had uh Yes. And certainly the loudest I have ever heard, O'Keefe. Uh, my ears, I don't know about you, but my ears were not okay the next day after that. <laughs> it was well, it was so much going on with that. Um tell me I, yeah. I went, and it was like crazy because that we're without Liv Mogridge in that game, which feels like if as soon as she went out, we played four straight five setters. It feels like just the gas just was out, just completely out of the tank, kind of like in the middle of that stretch. And then some I came into that match feeling uh, not as nervous as I wanted to because I'm like I don't know how we how we beat this team without our primary middle here, and then right. it, and then it happens. Um, so what what did you think about that that game in particular? And then also, what was it like to call that game? Because oh. that surely <laughs> you've seen so many of these games that had to feel like a one of the better moments I imagine of being around this team. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was definitely one of the high points uh, to get. A team like Louisville in O'Keefe, the room rocking. Yep. Right. And and for you know, and I said after that match to to folks, I like if you had told people back in the beginning that when it's match point against Louisville, we're gonna we're gonna set up Anna Bosey. Yeah. 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 You know, you, you probably would have had folks looking at you funny. Right. Saying, yeah. Yeah. what are you talking about? And yeah. it's like, you know, but she was so on that night that when when the ball came her way in that critical spot, she was ready for it. She was, you know, and it's nice. She she now sits going, yeah, my career high is against Louisville. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, that it's like her career high isn't against a cupcake team. Right, her her career high is against Louis is against Louisville yeah. when they're the number three team in the nation. Yeah, right? like second and, second third best win the teams ever had. Yeah, exactly. And so 
you know, I hope she's proud of that performance. And I hope that's something that, that she remembers for a long time. Uh, you know, both, both her, uh, you know, and, and Pierce with nine kills, both of them were just, were just on that night. And that, and that match was a lot of fun to call. Uh, it, it, I still had a voice when it was done, good, so good. It, it hasn't yet reached. It didn't reach quite that level that right. the that the Minnesota match and the NCAA tournament mm. back twenty plus years ago did. But that they were still playing to thirty, and right, yeah. uh, the fourth set went to forty eight, <laughs> and so there were a lot more <laughs> points to call. Right, but uh, Jamie Gergen, uh, one of the middles at the time before that match, said you know, we're, we're going to ruin your voice tonight. And, uh, and they did. And so, <laughs> that's awesome. That's and, awesome. and so, you know, she got what she wanted out of it, but it's, uh, uh, it was, uh, but those, you know, broadcasters are only as good as the event that's in front of them. Right. right? And because that's, you know, if it's a, if it's a great match, it's a great, it's usually a great broadcast as mm -hmm. well, because you can particularly, you know, keep, because you can feel the, the energy in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, where I sit, you know, you're sitting down in front of me, but where I sit, I've got the knees of fans in my back. Right. Yeah. You got, right? you got the place you are, is packed out. Yeah, you, got, I, you, you got a little peninsula of one alley of not someone that could elbow you or something. And it's right, just right in front of you and it's the court. And then you've got the D'Amico's parents screaming their butts off. 10 feet to exactly. your left and then all the other parents like yeah yeah you yeah. were in you're the sweet spot and so, there. and so you can you can feel it and you can even look if you look across the way to where the acc network folks sit for for the video side of it it's the same sort of thing right. they're surrounded by the fans and you look i look across the way and see keely evil and she's standing up the whole time too right. Yeah. right yeah and so so like her you know we're both feeling that energy in the room the mm -hmm. the whole time and it and if and if it's you know, not that exciting of a match or the room's really dead, then, it, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll have an effect on the broadcast, but yeah, yeah, you, you obviously are always trying to provide a good show uh, for the folks that were kind enough to tune in. Yeah. Right. And so you're going to always bring it if you will, just like the players will, but yeah, a match like that, it's just so much fun. And the fact that between us and, and Pitt, and Louisville, and I know Miami kind of had the matchup on us this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just we just didn't have an answer for their um, for their right side hitter, and uh, you know the freshman, and she was just and she's the real deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. and she causes problems for everybody. Uh, Grace Lopez out yep. of Puerto yep. Rico. Yep, yep, and and. You know, we just we just couldn't match up with her, and she went off. And so, you know, the coaches will they'll figure it out. Uh, it, you know, I mean, coach Coach Collier can can maybe look a little mild mannered, if you will, on the sideline sure. and whatnot. Yeah. Not she doesn't get into it and things like that, but but boy, does she hate to lose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she hate I he hates losing. Yeah. And so um, you know, that attitude comes across in the team. And you you go going back to what you mentioned of, of at the beginning of the season, trying to figure out what this team was. I don't know if you were at the exhibition match against Auburn, but yeah, the, the thing I saw in that match is we had one of the sets where we got down eight to nothing to yes. start the set. Yes, I remember this. Yes, yes. And we came back and won that set. And that, that same, the, the, the word I used a lot with coach throughout the season with this team was resilience. They seem not to fall apart yep. when things get tough, right? Um, they keep fighting. Uh, they know that the, the match, the game isn't over till you get to 25. The match isn't over until someone wins three mm -hmm. and there's no clock just like baseball, right? Yep. There's no yep. clock in volleyball. So there, there's, in a sense, always time to come back. Yep. And yep. so they they will fight and scrape and claw all the way to the end. Uh, and that that 
that served them well in that Louisville match. It served them well early on in the season with the match with Penn State, yep. the matches at Ohio State, you know, the, those big wins they got early on. That was all about this team just being resilient. And the and it's not just the coaches, it's the character and the heart of the players mm-hmm. themselves. They they are they are resilient people out on the floor and and they will uh, you know, they, they're not done until the ref says it's over. Yeah. That was a big so. thing I noticed year over year was if, if a match went over three sets last year, it didn't usually seem like a good thing. They were a get it done quickly kind of team. And if they got pushed, it was usually a rough sailing. The, uh, at Florida state game, notwithstanding with the uh, Bergman's crazy game, uh, last year, but yes. yeah, they, they had to do, they had to play six seven five setters and they only lost once right which that's yeah that's inc- that's really good to see you're just like yeah they will they can last a they can last five sets and play well into five sets and those f- right. fifth sets that they won for the most part they won decently convincingly they didn't have to come back yeah. from behind from too far or be at the brink like at 13 11 or something like that and figure it out um so they they had some yeah, stuff. exactly that was that exactly was, and it, yeah, because I had to. I was asking. Yeah, you know, I kept asking. So where does this come from? Yeah, you know, is this is this y'all? Is this the and and I coach even said herself. She says this is just the 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 character of these players. You know, this is this is, uh, you know, this is the way they are. Yeah. I think at one point I asked Bianca Bertolino about it, and she was just like, "Well, that's you know, that's how we are in South America, kind of a thing." And I'm <laughs> like, "All right, you know, yeah, represent, well. yeah. right? You know, it's like." It's like, hey, you know, you know, uh, and so if she, if she wants to say, yeah, this is because this is Argentina, you know, deal with it. I'm like, great, do Go that, yeah, yeah. I mean, be that be that way all the time and teach the rest of us. And she had probably the the best single performance of that. It's not over until it's over in that first set against Louisville, where that yep. serve, where that serve was just unguardable. I remember that final, oh, that final ace. Oh gosh. How transfixed Louisville was like that ball landed like three feet in and they didn't move yeah. a muscle. I was, yep. could not believe how, just how much they had taken over that team oh, yeah. and how just scared it was deer in the headlights, to the max for Louisville that night. Well, and to score that many points in a row at the end of the set like that, when, you know, you're reaching, you know, set point for the other team yeah. and, and your back is against the wall. You either score or you're done. Yeah. And to come back like that again, that was just more resilience by the by that squad, and so it, that's part of what made them so fun to watch. And even even in matches like the Nebraska one, you know, they, they get down big. It's like, nope, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep digging, we're gonna keep we're gonna mm-hmm. keep fighting, we're gonna try to find a way. And and they got closer as each set went on, uh, and they kind of figured out how to play Nebraska. Uh, but you know, you only had three, cho- we only had three chances to try yeah. to get, get past them before it was over. And we couldn't, we couldn't figure out a way to do it once, but, uh, yeah, I, yeah we might've been, if there was a fourth set, maybe, maybe there was, we would have uh, finally gotten over it. But, maybe. Yeah. They were seeing um, to figure out a little bit of something like it wasn't, yeah. they, they, they had found at least a way for themselves to play that put up a better challenge right. than what Nebraska was able to just pile on them beforehand. And it would have been, you know, they didn't go, oh, that's the first set, you know, we got we got beaten pretty badly and this just isn't going to be our night. Let's just, you know, do our thing and go home. But no, they didn't. I think, you know, Tam had a lot of hitting errors in that first set and she kept coming right back at it. And you yep. could see as the match went on, the, you know, she was getting more kills than errors as, mm-hmm. uh, as the night went on. Yep. And so... You know, she wasn't like going, oh, well, you know, the, I'm never going to figure this out. It's it's like, nope, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying until until we figure it out and uh, and they'll do that. And so, and so it's uh, uh, I hope they keep that character as the, the team goes forward next year. It, it's part of what makes them fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you ever get to meet these players in person, you just find out what impressive people they are mm-hmm. uh, and how smart they are. And uh, and you're like, OK, uh, you know, if if you ever become, you know, CEO of, of the company I'm working for, just, you know, please be nice to me. But yeah. it's uh, <laughs> it's you know, but you're going to you're going to be there somehow, some way at some point in the future. They're going to be, you know, they're going to be 
uh, you know, leaders wherever they end up after they graduate. Yeah, they're not they're they're at tech for a reason beyond just the volleyball. It's like to get you oh, yeah. get you get some special folks that come and play sports for tech. You mentioned earlier about the uh them being on the verge of like that in that top ten range, still that mm-hmm. one tier back like just that there's they they they're one tier back from the rest of those top powerhouses that they can obviously beat them any given night, as we saw against Louisville, but uh on, on the regular, they're probably gonna get swept and just don't have the depth, the rec- whatever it is. What do you think is that missing piece for them that can put them over that edge to maybe one year be one of those true top 10 teams that you do not want to face at all, no matter who you are? Time. I mean, it's just, it's when you, when you look, at, you need to have, you got to get the program established, right? Yep. And folks look at Coach Collier and says, well, this was your 10th season, right? Which is, uh, longer than any coach has been around since Shelton Collier. Right. And, and so, um, you know, she's come to Georgia tech. She has stayed at Georgia tech. I don't know if she's gotten, you know, feelers from other programs when they've had coaching changes mm-hmm. and whatnot. Cause she came here from Jacksonville and did, have you had folks going, Oh, well, you can upgrade again from Georgia tech to, to go some, you know, to this yeah. other, to this other place, but she has stayed. Um, and, and, you know, she's brought in good assistant coaches. The, the fact that once, you know, we've gotten some of them over the years that have gotten hired away and things like that is good news. Cause mm-hmm. it says we're not just developing players, but we're developing staff yeah. as well, but she has stayed and you've got to get that solid reputation. Like I said, of, of you come here, you're going to get better as a player. Uh, we talk a lot as Georgia tech people about the 40 year decision, right. To come to be an athlete at Georgia tech's not a four year decision. It's a 40 year decision. Uh, because if you, if you stick through it and you get the degree, the opportunities that are available to you are, are enormous, uh, particularly the network available to you as a Mm -hmm. student athlete through Georgia tech. And so you, you get the folks and they know that then, you know, then you're reloading, yeah. right? Then yeah. you're, then you're, you've, you've got people that it's, it's not so hard to recruit anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, if you're Texas or if you're Nebraska, you know, and, and, and maybe to some extent now Pitt and Louisville, you know, the recruiting is, is like, hi, I'm Texas or I, I'm not, I'm Nebraska. Yep. What, what have you got to sell them on? Right. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I, I think we're close to that point with this staff and whatnot that you can say, you know, well, what else do I got to sell you on? We're going to be at the top of one of the tougher conferences in volleyball in the in the country. You're going to play great players, that, you know, night in, night out, particularly with the new look ACC. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the volleyball doesn't get any easier no, next year. not in the slightest. With Southern Methodist, you know, and, and Stanford, Stanford and Stanford. Cal. Right. You've got in SMU and Stanford, you've got two NCAA tournament NCAA teams right there. I think SMU won their conference. Yeah. This two year. conference champs, right. Just between the two yeah. of them. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and then you've got Stanford, which, you know, like Pitt and Louisville are at perennially in the top five mm-hmm. these days uh, in volleyball. And so you're, yeah, you know, they, the ACC gets both that much harder and I would hope for the top players that much more attractive. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just, uh, I remember so, when I was talking with, uh, we got to talk to Smiley Manyang before they went out to uh, to Nebraska. And she mentioned like, yeah, it's been like the change from playing Big 12 volleyball to ACC volleyball was notable for her. Just like the kind of team she was playing yeah. and, the, and the level she was playing at on a regular basis was a, a, a big thing for her. And it, now we have SMU and Stanford. The fact Florida State won the conference this year, and then there's the other, and there's Pitt, Louisville, <laughs> and us. There's six possible conference champions right yeah. there already, which makes for a just fascinating stuff going forward, and how they build the schedule and everything, because that's been a war. That, that's probably bit that bit that bit us Pitt and Louisville this year was we kept had to eat each other alive, and then Florida just kind of rose to the top. Well, yeah. how do you do that when there's three or two other teams here that could do the same thing? It, that's going to be a, yeah, a really interesting proposition and problem. Yeah, it, it, the tiebreaker formula is going to just be insane when it comes down to it, right? <laughs> right. Because 
Yeah, you could end up having two, three teams with the same record potentially when it's all said and done. And, and, uh, uh, you know, but, you know, if you're a high level volleyball recruit and you're looking where to go, particularly with the demise of the Pac 12, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously the Big 10 is always, but even the Big 10, the Big 10 used to be a little deeper. Than they are now. Yeah, this year wasn't right? what we thought it was. I, I and, think like those Ohio State matches don't look as good as they we thought they were going to. Right. In the end. Right. And so they weren't as deep this year, but it also shows you how hard it is to win. I yeah. mean, the, the the difference between winning and losing, particularly in volleyball, is such a razor's edge. Uh, in uh, you know, when I look at all the the uh, various numbers and whatnot with this game, it's like I I I I have told players. If you have, if you reduce your errors by one, you as a player, you have one fewer error today than you had yesterday. That can be the difference between winning and losing in a yep. volleyball match. Easily, I mean yeah. that's 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 the, that's how close the 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 razor's edge is in the in volleyball and because it's such a momentum port you could say well they lost by six or they lost by eight and it's like yeah but when did you, you lose know, one of those points that set the 12 chain of points ago right. yeah. yeah 12 yeah. points ago you lost the momentum and and it snowballed on you and uh and or like in that auburn uh, you know uh uh, exhibition match and then in some of the like Penn State Ohio State some yep. of those other matches that was you know we seized back the momentum and were able to come back from some pretty significant deficits and yep. and win some matches um so it, it's just such a razor's edge and if you're a good player to to be able to night in night out play other good players is just fun yeah right yeah yeah, it, winning all of your matches 25 to to 15, you know, in three sets, that that's that after a while, that's not that interesting. Yeah. But if you're playing the the quality of 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 teams that are now available to you as a competitor in the ACC, wow. You yeah. Know, and and the opportunity to say, do you wanna do you wanna sit the bench? at stanford or Pitt or louisville yeah or do you want to play all the time at a georgia tech a florida state a miami you know that's going to be a decision i think that some players may eventually be looking at because yeah. you know while there's not a lot of professional money in in volleyball at least in the u.s you got right. a couple leagues trying to get started uh, here, like there'll be one starting yeah, we got, up. I we think, got the vibe right after coming. the first of the year, the Atlanta yeah. vibe, and that should be interesting. But the, you know, that's what happened in college basketball. Is as you got more exposure and you got more TV and you got more of this, players that might have gone and sat the bench at a UCLA or a, a North Carolina or a Kentucky or a Kansas yep. started saying, you know what, I can go play all the time against those players i think i'm just as good or or you know i can compete with them yep. and now i can do it on a night in night out basis on the floor on tv as opposed to sitting the bench and playing when i play and yeah you might once in a while get a championship ring out of it and everybody would love everybody wants that whether they're on the floor or not yeah but it's more fun playing than not playing and i think you know hopefully with the additions to the ACC with the the exposure this sport is getting and the way that TV ratings are going up, uh, you're going to, the talent's going to spread itself out because they're going to all want to play. Right. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. And I know that coach Collier has got a great story to tell recruits and uh, she's got a great history of getting the most out of her team and most out of her players and having them have fun along the way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can say, yeah, we're right on that verge, but I, I don't think we're that far away from it. And it'll be yeah. interesting to see uh, the team that comes in next year. We've got the one middle uh, locally. Yeah. Uh, Logan Wiley. Will, yeah. 
Yeah, who's going to stay home and play? It'll be interesting to see what she brings mm -hmm. to this team. Uh, you know, there I, I think there might still be some other players. That, I'm sure there's that others that way. are still floating out there. In the, yeah, in yeah. The, the whether whether about. U.S. recruits or international recruits, who knows? But uh, you know, because they can't really get into all of that with everybody to yeah. let you know what might might or might not happen. But it's a uh, it's an exciting time, and I, I you know I. I, I'm looking forward, hopefully, to being around when you know Stanford has to play in the O'Keefe Gym. Yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> I, I hope so badly they play here next year. That'd be such a such a. I mean, I, I assume we'll get one of the three of those teams of the new folks will be here in some yeah. form, probably. Um, it'll be yeah, that. either we're going, you know, either we'll have a California swing, whether it's next year or the year after where you play yep. Stanford and Cal on the same weekend, just like you do when we go, you know, we go play Virginia and yep. Virginia Tech yep. in the same way. It's the same deal, North Carolina, right? Yeah, all yep, the little the little pod things they do. Yeah, the, yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, and then, you know, the two of them will come through here, at, you yep. know, here in Clemson at some point or however they however they pair everybody up you know, to talking about trying to figure out who your I know. travel I partners are in this in this world exactly yeah. uh, i would not be interesting i would not be surprised if there are some weekends where they just say all right we're sending two of the three teams to atlanta you just fly in there and then clemson drives down maybe one of the north carolina teams drive down and they just do a little mini pod for three days and o'keefe is just the home base for a few yeah, matches that'd be interesting that'd be that'd be a fun yeah. little experiment to see That's if they ever do that kind of how division three works in order to mm. in order to keep travel uh you know costs down they'll yeah. they'll bring in you know they'll have four teams in one location and they'll they'll round robin yeah. it for the weekend and yeah and off you go some massive but, high school sports vibes with this as well uh yeah <laughs> i want to talk about i want to talk to them about how you got to tech uh well whenever there's someone we have new, new to the podcast want to hear their story of how they like, got to tech what brought them into the fold so i mean what was what was it that got you into broadcasting and into broadcasting tech women's sports specifically so I went to tech as a student and uh, uh, got my degree in computer science and was off. Uh, I had gotten into the World Wide Web very early on. Mm. And I had connected up with a... Um, so I, I've been on the internet for almost 40 years, almost as long as you can Ooh. be on the internet. Yeah, that's, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, you know, there was a time when the, I still remember the days when the list of all the computers on the internet was distributed to <laughs> all the computers on the internet that's every amazing. night. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And and yeah, if you wanted to know what NASA was up to, you could just go log into the, you know, some server at NASA and <laughs> and uh, poke around and see what they had going on and there was no no browser, no nothing. Yeah. But uh seeing the potential for what websites could be, particularly for news and information, and and you get into that and sports, and you get a lot of numbers and sports, and I'm like, this is like ready made for yep. that stuff. And so I got connected up with a website uh, that was created by a book publishing company called O'Reilly and Associates. And people who are in the software biz, they know that name, and they actually had published a book in the early 90s called the whole internet catalog and so the list of all the websites on the internet was in this paper published they wrote, they wrote the you internet know. yellow pages yes and you could go <laughs> buy it at your bookstore and the the joke was you know as soon as you brought it home it was obsolete right because yes, something changed the internet, yeah, exactly. the internet changes all the time so as soon as you got home well the book's out of date right <laughs> and so they had created they had put an online version of it and they kind of created these online magazines and they didn't have a sports part of it. It had mm -hmm. like travel and news and stuff like that. So I wrote them a proposal, said, you got to do sports. And they said, okay. And they funded it. And we created this uh, sports site where, and you can't do everything, right? I'm like yeah. this one man band. And so to just to get started, we focused on two sports, baseball, because of the numbers, there's yep. a ton of numbers e and e data yeah. Yeah. in baseball. And the second was women's athletics, hmm. because we knew it was an underserved market. Yeah, And this would be something that created a little bit of uniqueness to say, well, what can you, what can we provide that nobody else is providing? Mm -hmm. 
And so we said, well, let's let's get into women's athletics, women's basketball. And O'Reilly and Associates, just like a lot of internet things based out in Silicon Valley, well, guess who's nearby? Stanford. Mm -hmm. Guess who happens to be perennially really good at women's mm -hmm. basketball? Yep, yep, yep. Stanford, right? So this was like, you. I already had people on staff out there excited about that notion, right? Women's yeah. basketball? Yeah, we're all in yeah. for it, yeah. right? So I'm starting to go to the events and cover them. Right. And a friend of mine, Richard Musterer, we were mm -hmm. students at the same time and whatnot. He had started broadcasting women's basketball on WREK. Has to be 40 years ago now. Dang. Folks don't realize that for tenured broadcasters for Georgia Tech, Richard Musterer today of people on the air is number one. He's been doing it longer than anybody. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and he loved, he loves the game. He loves the program and has put a lot of his heart and soul in making that broadcast work. Mm -hmm. And so I'm there at the ACC basketball tournament, essentially sitting next to him. We know each other, we're talking and, we're, and he's by himself and we're like, he's like, Hey, you know, let's talk at halftime. And just, and so we did. Mm -hmm. And from that, it got to a point where, you know, it's just, we're just, yeah, we had a game where I just kept listening and then he kept talking to me and it kind of grew from there. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we work pretty well as broadcast partners uh, and, and in the in the basketball. And I did that. And then in 2002, there was a person at WREK who was a fan of the volleyball program and um, who's unfortunately no longer with us. But he. Uh, he really pushed for adding volleyball broadcasts mm -hmm. and they needed someone to do play by play. And so they just started asking around, right. Who's yeah. available, who could do, who might want, none of us had done it before. And I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. And I did. And, and it, it's, you know, I've been there ever since. Yeah. Uh, and so there was a lot of, if, if I had tapes of some of those old matches, I'd probably cringe. Oh, easily, to, easily. Yeah. I've got back to my I'm own trying. pod recordings. I'm like, Oh, I could have done better in 18 different I'm trying ways. To, yeah, you're learning it. Yeah. You're learning it on the fly. I'm learning the rules of the game. I'm learning the terminology. I'm mm -hmm. learning, you know, the whole bit. But fortunately, the the team at the time, uh, not only were they successful, they were willing to talk to me. That's, nice. and, That's and always so, nice. So <laughs> yeah, and and so uh, you know, and so that team, you know, schooled me in the game. Uh, they would come, you know, they were willing to come talk to me after matches, even when they lost, yeah. uh, you know, because they, they wanted, they, they knew what it could mean for the program. Cause we were one of the only, one of the few volleyball programs in the nation that had a broadcast of any kind. Yeah. But, yeah California could... schools that had them. Yeah. So, you know, maybe a couple in the Midwest, but there wasn't a lot. Right. So, you know, we were it, which is when when we went to minnesota for that ncaa match mm -hmm. up at minnesota and i'm up in this crow's nest in the top of the barn as yeah, they call it right, at yeah. minnesota where one half is like basketball volleyball and the other half is a hockey rink right <laughs> it's this ginormous in it it's it's a barn but there's this it's like duke Right. There's this crow's nest way yeah. up in the top mm -hmm. of the building. I'm up there. The Minnesota has a guy that's sitting off to my left and we're up there doing the doing the match. And by the that match, because of how close it was and the fact that WREK was streaming and was streaming very early on as another one of those, you know, we're, we're Georgia Tech. We can do that yep. yeah. kind of thing. It's a very generic w tech person does a tech thing like uh, yeah. through and through, we're, you know. To stream WREK on the internet when it became possible to stream audio on the internet, it, it, they just kind of did it. You yeah. know, it's like, ah, made let's it made do sense. It. Yeah, you may as well. So we were one of the few places with streaming audio. So we ended up melting the WREK streaming server because as word of mouth through the volleyball community went on, the, there's this match mm -hmm. going on in Minnesota and it's exciting and it's amazing. Um, and and this is the only way you can get it is by doing the streaming. So yeah. after that, I was getting all this reaction back of wow, this is you know, whoa, whoa. both 
people just grateful that it was there mm -hmm. um as well as it be it was like a one of the it's one of the classic ncaa volleyball matches and i'm yeah. privileged to have been able to be there and and get it on air but you know i've been doing it since then through the the various staffs that have come and gone and uh you know they've all been great to work with and it's I'm just grateful that I get to keep doing it. And someday someone will tell me I'm not allowed to do it anymore. And I, and you know, but right. That day hasn't come yet. And, uh, uh, I'm happy to do it. And it's, it's a lot of fun and, and it's a great, it's a great program to be around. And I did softball yeah. for a while as well yeah. when Mewborn field opened up, mm -hmm. uh, between when, Mewborn opened up and kind of the ACC network came along. When yeah, the ACC yeah. network kind of came along, it, yeah, it's it sort of became, you know, not my turn anymore for yeah. softball. But so I had a while there where I was doing women's basketball color, volleyball play by play, and then softball play by play, um, and uh, and so you know I it, it loved it. It was great fun. They're all great. They're all you know, amazing program. And my daughter ended up a division one athlete. There you go. So it's, uh, um, you know, folks, you don't get a good idea of how much work it is to be a division one athlete. And so I always have the utmost respect for anyone, any student athlete who comes to Georgia tech, does the work, gets through it, gets mm -hmm. out and so on, because, it's it's a lot harder than you think yeah no it's easily of the prod of the multi-year projects someone's ever going to do in their life if you can get through being a top tier athlete keeping your body in prime shape for four straight years at peak condition and taking probably the hardest classes you've ever taken depending on what major you're doing at any given point like yeah that's going to be it, it it's hard and getting through it is easily one of the most I mean, how do I put it? Josh, I think like Josh Pastner understood this a lot. He every press conference, he had something that would kind of hint at like these kids are doing something better, more impressive than most of us are ever going to do in the first place. And so he was. I yeah, loved how he how exactly. much humility he had about that kind of stuff. Um, and being able to see it face to in person like we do is uh, of one of the coolest things we're ever going to do. And, and tech doesn't have. Uh, you know, when I was a student, folks like to joke about management majors and whatnot, mainly because they didn't have to take the the third, the fourth and fifth quarters of calculus that the rest of us were were taking. But, um, you know, that that major's not it's not a gimme kind of situation. No, right? you, no that was my major. When are, I was there. You, it was, you are working hard. Yeah. And and there are, you know, expectation, high expectations within that space yep. for the students in that major, just like there are in any of the other majors mm -hmm. at Georgia tech, yep. uh, you know, you might not be, be soldering, you know, resistors <laughs> onto a board or something like that, but there's, there's a lot of effort still going on to be successful in those yep. majors. Yep. And I, so I got to see it face to face. Like I had classes with a lot of my Latin and I had classes with Breland Morissette. Uh, with yeah. a few of the and some of the football guys, a lot of football guys, just a lot of them, plenty of the baseball guys, and like yeah, it's you, you can tell it's a little bit. There's an extra level for them because sometimes they're showing up to their nine thirty a.m. when they got back at two from whatever game they're at that the night before or yeah, something exactly. like that. None of us are no. doing that for the most part. No, uh, so yeah, it's a whole yeah. other, it's a whole other level. Um, you've been able to see the the I mean, what all what you've seen it probably all the all Americans that have come through this volleyball team. Uh, since they've started having all Americans, I think the list here what starts in oh four, yeah oh three with Kelly, yeah Kelly, of course, yeah she was one of the first ones. Um, when you're watching these teams that are, got they have those game changing players who are like clearly going to be sitting in program history for a long time. Does it feel different when you're calling those games? Is there an extra level of okay, I gotta really make this make these seasons sound great mm -hmm. because these are going to be unforgettable times when it's all said and done? Oh yeah. And you and you also want to make sure you're appreciating what you're you're seeing, mm -hmm. you know, while it's happening, right? For for most folks, most recently, it's Julia Bergman. Mm -hmm. You you knew when she walked on; she was highly regarded when she showed up, right? Uh, and you know, she performed 
at such a high level that you, know, you want to make sure, one, that you're doing justice to their play with the broadcast because people can't, if they're listening to me, they can't see it. Yeah. And so I'm doing the best I can to paint a picture for them in within the speed and flow of the match. And mm -hmm. volleyball goes very fast. Yep. Uh, and and so uh, you you're trying to do justice to them and and what their skill is as a player and what they bring to the you know what they're putting out on the court so that folks do feel like oh wow this you know this is. Uh, you know, whether you want to consider someone a generational talent or just like the, you know, we may, we may or may not ever see someone like this player again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you want to, you want to enjoy what you've got when you've got it. And, and even go back to the teams, the team that I started with back in 2002 and Lauren Sauer was someone who was very highly recruited. Mm -hmm. uh yeah it, it's we're like competing with hawaii and at the time <laughs> back then you know hawaii was one of the top programs in the nation mm -hmm. and you know, there was always this argument every year with the ncaa tournament are they going to allow hawaii to host <laughs> because now you've got to send three other programs out yeah. to hawaii right yeah. and how much is that going to cost everybody and and things like that uh and so they would sort of alternately be allowed to mm -hmm. host right or they mm -hmm. get shafted by the committee and yeah. and uh and have to go to california and they'd scream and yell about it but they you know she was on that team in the mix of some players who had been told while being recruited you would never they would never play for a top 25 program yeah you know, you're just not good enough mm -hmm. and so half that team had ginormous chips on their shoulders because they had been told that they can't they they can't do it, mm -hmm. and when they did it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, big stuff. They they were more than happy to to make sure that everybody knew they did it mm -hmm. uh, because they because they deserved that, right? And so you know, I I don't mind getting you know players that are maybe a little bit of an underdog coming through tech that mm -hmm. that are smart and they're going to fight and they're going to do their thing uh but you've also got to have some of those high level players like Julia Bergman and whatnot yeah. but, but we have had we've had a lot of players that that you know either that made themselves into the kind of player they wanted to be while they were at tech mm -hmm. and ended up being all Americans. Uh, you look at the Van Guntz twins yep. and, and yep. one of them being able to, to improve her game, you know, uh, both of them probably could have eventually been there, but it's, you know, to, to work that hard and to eventually work yourself into a place where you're an all American, um, you know, Talisa Kellogg was mm -hmm. just, uh, an amazing athlete to watch, uh, and and also to see what happened in and around the stands because for folks who don't know this, Delisa Kellogg's the daughter of of CBS broadcaster Clark Kellogg. Oh, I did not know this. Okay, so you know, and the guy played the game, played basketball as well. Mm -hmm. So whenever whenever Clark was in town to watch Talisa play, he would be up in one corner of O'Keefe mm -hmm. trying to it, as much as a. NBA class basketball player can be inconspicuous in yes. any room, yes. right? Which is like impossible. Thinking of Patrick right? Ewing this season when he showed up a couple times. It's yes, like, when it, yeah. well, he's here. <laughs> yeah. It's like you can't hide Patrick Ewing. Yeah. Right. And so, so Clark Kellogg would be up in the corner of the gym watching his daughter play, but there would be this ring of, of basketball players around him. <laughs> That got the men's basketball team into the gym all the time, right? Because it's like yeah. they're over there soaking up with as much basketball knowledge right. from from Clark Kellogg as they can, while watching, you know, while in between, you know, watching his daughter play mm -hmm. volleyball, and and she was just uh, an amazing athlete to watch. And Monique Mead, who was one of the, mm -hmm. was just a, uh, uh, you know, again another amazing athlete. If you like watching Bianca Bertolino serve you should have seen Monique Mead serve mm, had that she had I mean, that serve oh she had a some... she had a season where she had over 50 aces well, that'll do yeah yeah and and she did it was the same it was a similar kind of setup to where she would toss the ball up to the ceiling mm -hmm. to the O'Keefe ceiling yes <laughs> and and then just obliterate it um 
Uh, you know, I mean, Bertolino ended up with 62 aces this year, but I don't think that's close to where uh, Meade ended up in, um, uh, you know, her best season. Because uh, Meade ended up with like 148 aces in her career at Tech. So, but she was the same sort of thing. That ball came at you and there were people that just wanted to duck out of the way. Yeah. Because, you, yeah. you know, because even normal contact with that with that serve hurt. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it was, uh, and then, you know, again, jump out of the gym, play in the right side, doing some amazing stuff for the program. And so we've, we've been really fortunate to have some, some great athletes come through the program, mm -hmm. but, you know, also to have so many just great people come through the program right. and and you still see many of them back in the gym whenever yeah. they can yeah aaron so. aaron moss showed up a couple of times i know Tippett showed up this year as well i mean alumni day brings the whole run of people as well so yeah you always get and, and who else uh what well, london ackerman's there half the time london too. ackerman was there several times yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's good it, i like seeing the, the the ones that can be in o'keefe making their way yes. in because i think it's the, uh, as part of that time thing you mentioned of that getting us to the next level showing that your alumni also care about the team at the same time and are going to be present for you and cheer you on there. Like I I'm sure that has to play a, it, it. At least it doesn't hurt yeah. at the very least, but at least shows like, Hey, the folks that have built this program still care about this program. It wasn't nothing to them when their, when their time was over. Um, and now a lot of those are probably alumni too. So you got your run yeah. of just the line of Collier and her, her extended volleyball family. Yeah, being exactly. There. Yeah. And, and just the athletic program at tech, the way the athletes support each other is just is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Because you you know we joke about the the swim team initiation <laughs> in yes. in the early weekends. Yes. Uh, which but they're there. Yeah. Right. The swim team is there. The softball team is there. Yep. The the basketball teams are there. You see football players there when they can. You know, it's hard for volleyball and football to watch each other because yeah. of the way their schedules work out. But when they can you you get you see those players and they're they're all supporting each other as an athletic program not mm -hmm. just you know they're not just oh i'm on this team i'm on this team and right. we don't ever we yeah. don't ever socialize or anything like that yeah and, it's always and, been notable to me and when i went to swim meets last year how many like half the volleyball team would come to every meet like it was unmistakable it was like oh yep there's julia there's bianca they're they're at all these yeah. meets uh that a lot know a lot of track and field guys show up to to the volleyball matches too um and like like the top cream of that team like zach yeager and all those guys are showing up all the time yeah and so you it, it's not just you know the the culture that the athletes have created for themselves at georgia tech because this has been across athletic directors it's been across coaching staffs so a lot of that kind of culture is being passed down from athlete to athlete mm -hmm. not necessarily from the administration yeah right yeah. and and so uh you know i'm hoping they maintain it in years to come and things like that, because I think that makes tech even that much more attractive, a landing place for those kind of high level recruits yeah. to say, oh, okay, I'm going to, you're not just going to be supported by your own teammates. You're going to be supported by your colleagues in the program mm -hmm. as well as the leadership. Cause I think we've got, you know, we've got good, we've got a good crop of donors that are around the program trying to do what they can to help things along um and so it's you know like i said i've been very blessed to be able to hang out and yeah. and and be you know contribute in my small you know in my little small corner uh to to the you know what's going on and promoting these programs yeah but the the coaches the athletes the administrators uh, are just all quality people and yeah. you know that that shows in the in the product on the field to go back to the aces, uh, Bertolino you know, got she got sixty two. You said this year, I believe so. 62. She I believe that my that sheet says sixty two this year. I that puts her, looking. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the uh, the almanac, so to say. That's two behind Julia's mark in 2019 when she got sixty four. Yeah. So she is she finished sixth. It was the sixth most productive service a season by any jacket. She got past Wendy Malins, who had fifty eight and eighty eight. Um, yeah. So that's the only that that's the only yeah. So what? There's only two 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 only two players in the 2000s in the top six on this list everyone else was in the 90s uh with the, yeah when the matches were longer right yeah <laughs> i need a, i need a, i'm gonna you know i'm gonna ask anthony with the team to give me the 
do the season records with, with with the two different scoring types because they, they, they don't they don't go together eventually when you have enough side outs. It's hard. So, yeah, it's it's different. It's hard to judge. It's a, it's hard to compare out. the numbers because like you go to the you go to the the career assist list and to see Keely Evelyn with her 64 64 yeah she had a couple years she had a year or so in that side out era but it wasn't her career wasn't completely in that side out right. era so yeah. that shows you you know the amazing setter she was for this program yeah. maddie mckissick's uh, fantastic 2019 where she had 1387 is still just under 600 behind Keeley's best year in 2002. Which yeah, he had exactly. 2,000 assists in that season because and, and that 2002 was a rally scoring season, but they were playing to 30 instead of playing to 25. So you had, yeah. you know, 10 more potentially more points in each of the in each of the games that went along. The fifth game was always 15. Yeah, uh, but you uh, you had more opportunities. But what Maddie did, her for to have four thousand assists in a career in the twenty five point era, the way she did, just you know shows how how great she was as well. Yeah. But it's it's going to be hard to get to that sixty four sixty four. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. by the way the game is played now, and that's why yeah, in some cases you do sort of need to segment out the numbers a little bit to be able to say okay, this is the the side out era this is the we've entered the, the live ball point era yeah, the 25 yeah, yeah like yeah, live yeah. ball baseball right yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's just or it's dead all, ball it, baseball for the pitchers <laughs> yes 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 it's all it's all a tad different uh my final question before we wrap up here if there if there was a match you got to call again not because you messed up or just one match you just got to sit in and experience for the first time again do you have a match that that would be this year's louisville match is certainly high up on that list uh the um um obviously the the minnesota match right, in the right. ncaa has to be there uh just because of what it meant mm -hmm. and where it was yeah. for an acc team to go into a big 10 gym and and do what they did they mm -hmm. didn't win the match but the play they way they played and to uh, and, and to do what they did on minnesota's home floor mm -hmm. was was something that you know not many teams get to do right yeah uh and so you know those two are certainly standouts yeah th those two probably are one and two right now on the on the list of mm -hmm. things just because of the great uh matches that they were um and then you know you can when when you find a match that maybe you know, like that Louisville match that maybe mm -hmm. you weren't expecting to win and, and the team dig, digs deep and you find a way and you say, no, we can compete with these teams. Yeah. It's just finding that extra one, two point, you know, making that fewer error. Um, you know, that's, that's where it goes. And I'd probably have to go find some five set match again somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, against, it, you know, if you want in conference against teams that are, that we were, trying to be better than you know trying to say okay we want to get to this level yeah to be you know at the in the various eras that this that the school has had that you know up and down trying to get where they want to be um but um uh you know and then the the crazy thing folks may not remember is we ohio state had a hitter named stacy gordon and in that 30 point era, she came to Georgia Tech and had 30 kills in three sets. Woo. And you know, if it, it it's not a performance by a Georgia Tech player, if you will, but if you ever wanted to see a performance by an opposing player to where you were just like, okay, yeah, yeah, we're not we're not stopping her because they set her everywhere in the gym. Mm -hmm. And there were some rotations where she was not on the floor. And I'm on radio. Go well. If we're going to score, we better do it now. <laughs> and we and we did. We had we had sets to where we were getting close to winning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if we're going to win, we better win now before she comes back on the floor. Because yeah. as soon as she's back on the floor, it's going to be over. So done. And yeah. and yeah. that's what happened. But it's uh, it's yeah. You know, when you get to see performances like that from these players, because 
the the athleticism folks may not realize the athleticism that goes into some of this yeah uh it's just fun it's just fun to watch and it's and hopefully in the broadcast that that gets communicated yeah is to is the fun of watching it and yeah i think I, you know emotionally i'll live and die by what what's going on for tech mm -hmm. uh but it's it's just so much fun. Yeah. No, I, as I've been pitching this team to people to like come to these matches, come to the McKay Mish game, it's like you're not the balance of power and precision and touch and just general speed and all sorts of stuff. It's a perfect me melting pot for this for women's sports and easily one of the best showcases you're going to get of a woman's sport being at its best. So uh, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's fun as heck. And I cannot wait for next season. Uh, well, I guess we're going to have some spring matches too. So we'll get to see a little bit of action in the spring before. Uh, it, assume, assuming it, they put schedule matches at O'Keefe in the spring yeah. for exhibition stuff. So, and if and if you're missing volleyball, then you know next month you've got the Atlanta vibe to go check yeah. out. Yeah, uh, they they've got uh, you know they've got Louisville's setter, uh, Tori Dilfer. Dilfer I don't yeah, remember Tori. Her, her yeah. married name right now, but you know she's gonna she'll be on that team. You're gonna have uh, uh, Lekater member member Mene, uh, who played at Pitt. So you've got you've got a few ACC players that folks might recognize on that squad, and so you know checking them out uh, is 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 going to be you know worthwhile if you if you're looking for some high level volley volleyball to take in. I hope you know there's a couple efforts in pro volleyball going on in the U.S. right now. Hopefully one of them will succeed. Yeah, because uh, it's certainly played professionally you know, around the world. Yeah, and it would be great for the you know players here in the u.s because we're very good particularly in the women's side women's volleyball power national you know yeah. worldwide yeah it would be great to have a a league of high a high quality league in the u.s so these players don't have to you know we, do yeah. like keely evelyn did and go play in spain yeah. for several years and and to, in order to be able to continue their volleyball careers yeah. now that we've got now that the television is at an all-time high for the sport like the, the exposure is better so to be able to retain them be like okay you can help them become more household names beyond just a couple of years there with your team to getting them into a tournament or something like that yeah because what julia is in turk is in a what both julia and breland are in turkey right now uh after yeah, their, exactly so it's like well We're, well maybe we'll see them play again we don't know <laughs> like it's it, it you yeah i'm and... just hoping, hoping pray for that Right. And it, you, you, wouldn't it be great to have a high quality women's professional volleyball league in the U S where, where Breland and, and Julia were here. Yeah. And, and you could say, Oh, whether they're on the Atlanta team or one of the other ones are like, Oh, well, you know, Breland's team's going to be in town next week. Exactly. Let's, let's exactly. go buy a ticket or oh, Julia's coming to town. I got to be there. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the, so it'd yeah. be nice to be able to see them. Yeah, hopefully, so. hopefully that pans out. Hey, maybe they can be signed as free agents. You never know. They got. We'll see, we'll see how that works out in the coming years. Yeah, we'll, uh, see. we'll see. Uh, we'll it's see. It's all in its infancy, and they're all yes. trying to figure out their business models and yeah. and what what's going to work, what's not going to work. Uh, hopefully, they sell enough seats uh, out at the. Uh, I know it is the Gwinnett Arena. Right? It's, it's yeah, well, it's Gwinnett Arena, Duluth Arena, Gas kind. South, something it, like that. Uh, yeah, Gas South Arena. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so at least they get uh, an arena. I'm glad they get an arena and not yeah. not something else. That was I'm glad. And it's a have nice that. size room. It is. Yeah, it George, is. Georgia Tech used it when when uh, redoing McCamish for yep. right. uh, you know with the rebuild that happened, and so certainly women's basketball played out there. For a year, uh, I think the men played a f played out there some as well. It's it's a pretty it's a good room. Yeah, I remember it. So, for and the... fans of minor league hockey are probably very familiar with that building. Anyway, yes, so. I've been to a game there. I think my two other big <laughs> nights there where I saw you two and Arcade Fire in there in, in that building. Oh, there so you go. It's, it's, it's why not? I, I got some good memories in there. Uh, Kurt, before we leave, where could if, for those that have not heard you and your great work, where can people find you on the radio? Um, so for volleyball, obviously, uh, it's, and then with women's basketball, I'll be up in Athens tomorrow working with Richard Muster on women's basketball, uh, that should be on WREK, but either way, both volleyball, women's basketball, along with, uh, you know, football and men's basketball. And I think even baseball, you can get the audio and the Georgia tech yellow jackets app available for iOS and Android. So that's one way to get it. And then, uh, over the air, uh, should you should be able to go to ninety one point one FM uh, WREK uh, in if for for most games, uh, you know, and 
it should be it should be on but if it's not on wrek it'll certainly be uh in the app uh which you know plug into your car radio if you're driving around and and uh and take it in and and enjoy it and uh i if you want to if you want to check me out on twitter i'm at at kurt in atlanta uh and uh and you know we go from there but it's uh it's it's been you know so far yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully it gets to continue for yep. uh, several more years before it's all finished, at least, you know, my time. But uh, like I say, good program, good people, love being around it. And, you know, uh, just trying to to give my small contribution back to to you know, promoting the, the good work and the, the good effort that the players and coaches are putting in. Absolutely. I think both have a shared mission there and trying to bring lights to the really good stuff that this school and these players do. So it's a joy to, it's a joy to hang out with you at games. Thanks so much for coming on the pod. Oh, thanks for having me on. Uh, happy to hang out with you anytime.